Leviticus 6. Then the Lord said to Moses, Suppose one of you sins against your associate and is unfaithful to the Lord. Suppose you cheat in a deal involving a security deposit, or you steal or commit fraud, or you find lost property and lie about it, or you lie while swearing to tell the truth, or you commit any other such sin. If you have sinned in any of these ways, you are guilty. You must give back whatever you stole, or the money you took by extortion, or the security deposit, or the lost property you found, or anything obtained by swearing falsely. You must make restitution by paying the full price plus an additional 20% to the person you have harmed. On the same day, you must present a guilt offering. As a guilt offering to the Lord, you must bring to the priest your own ram with no defects, or you may buy one of equal value. Through this process, the priest will purify you before the Lord, making you right with him, and you will be forgiven for any of these sins you have committed. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons the following instructions regarding the burnt offering. The burnt offering must be left on top of the altar until the next morning, and the fire on the altar must be kept burning all night. In the morning, after the priest on duty has put on his official linen clothing and linen undergarments, he must clean out the ashes of the burnt offering and put them beside the altar. Then he must take off these garments, change back into his regular clothes, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. Meanwhile, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning, the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offering on it. He will then burn the fat of the peace offerings on it. Remember, the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. These are the instructions regarding the grain offering. Aaron's sons must present this offering to the Lord in front of the altar. The priest on duty will take from the grain offering a handful of the choice flour moistened with olive oil, together with all the frankincense. He will burn this representative portion on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Aaron and his sons may eat the rest of the flour, but it must be baked without yeast and eaten in a sacred place within the courtyard of the tabernacle. Remember, it must never be prepared with yeast. I have given it to the priest as their share of the special gifts presented to me. Like the sin offering and the guilt offering, it is most holy. Any of Aaron's male descendants may eat from the special gifts presented to the Lord. This is their permanent right from generation to generation. Anyone or anything that touches these offerings will become holy. Then the Lord said to Moses, on the day Aaron and his sons are anointed, they must present to the Lord the standard grain offering of two quarts of choice flour, half to be offered in the morning and half to be offered in the evening. It must be carefully mixed with olive oil and cooked on a griddle. Then slice this grain offering and present it as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. In each generation, the high priest who succeeds Aaron must prepare this same offering. It belongs to the Lord and must be burned up completely. This is a permanent law. All such grain offerings of a priest must be burned up entirely. None of it may be eaten. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons the following instructions regarding the sin offering. 
the animal given as an offering for sin is most holy is a most holy offering and it must be slaughtered in the lord's presence at the place where the burnt offerings are slaughtered the priest who offers the sacrifice as a sin offering must eat his portion in a sacred place within the courtyard of the tabernacle Anyone or anything that touches the sacrificial meat will become holy. If any of the sacrificial blood spatters on a person's clothing, the soiled garment must be washed in a sacred place. If a clay pot is used to boil the sacrificial meat, it must then be broken. If a bronze pot is used, it must be scoured and thoroughly rinsed with water. Any male from a priest's family may eat from this offering. It is most holy, but the offering for sin may not be eaten if its blood was brought into the tabernacle as an offering for purification in the holy place. It must be completely burned with fire. Leviticus 7 These are the instructions for the guilt offering. It is most holy. The animal sacrificed as a guilt offering must be slaughtered at the place where the burnt offerings are slaughtered, and its blood must be spattered, splattered against all sides of the altar. The priest will then offer all its fat on the altar, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver. These are to be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar as a special gift presented to the Lord. This is the guilt offering. Any male from a priest's family may eat the meat. It must be eaten in a sacred place, for it is most holy. The same instructions apply to both the guilt offering and the sin offering. Both belong to the priest who uses them to purify someone, making that person right with the Lord. In the case of the burnt offering, the priest may keep the hide of the sacrificed animal. Any grain offering that has been baked in an oven, prepared in a pan, or cooked on a griddle belongs to the priest who presents it. All other grain offerings, whether made of dry flour or flour moistened with olive oil, are to be shared equally among all the priests, the descendants of Aaron. These are the instructions regarding the different kinds of peace offerings that may be presented to the Lord. If you present your peace offering as an expression of thanksgiving, the usual animal sacrifice must be accompanied by various kinds of bread made without yeast, thin cakes mixed with olive oil, wafers spread with oil, and cakes made of choice flour mixed with olive oil. This peace offering of thanksgiving must also be accompanied by loaves of bread made with yeast. One of each kind of bread must be presented as a gift to the Lord. It will then belong to the priest who splatters the blood of the peace offering against the altar. The meat of the peace offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the same day it is offered. None of it may be saved for the next morning. If you bring an offering to fulfill a vow or as a voluntary offering, the meat must be eaten on the same day the sacrifice is offered. But whatever is left over may be eaten on the second day. Any meat left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the meat from the peace offering is eaten on the third day, the person who presented it will not be accepted by the Lord. You will receive no credit for offering it. By then the meat will be contaminated. If you eat it, you will be punished for your sin. Meat that touches anything ceremonially, ceremonial, ceremonially unclean may not be eaten. It must be completely burned up. The rest of the meat may be eaten, but only by people who are ceremonial, ceremonial, 
ceremonially clean. <laughs> if you are ceremonially clean and you eat meat from a peace offering that was presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. If you touch anything that is unclean, whether it is human defilement or an unclean animal or any other unclean detestable thing, and then eat meat from a peace offering presented to the Lord, you will be cut off from the community. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. You must never eat fat, whether from cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn to pieces by wild animals must never be eaten, though it may be used for any other purpose. Anyone who eats fat from an animal presented as a special gift to the Lord will be cut off from the community. No matter where you live, you must never consume the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who consumes blood will be cut off from the community. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present a peace offering to the Lord, bring part of it as a gift to the Lord. Present it to the Lord with your own hands as a special gift to the Lord. Bring the fat of the animal together with the breast and lift up the breast as a special offering to the Lord. Then the priest will burn the fat on the altar, but the breast will belong to Aaron and his descendants. Give the right thigh of your peace offering to the priest as a gift. The right thigh must always be given to the priest who offers the blood and the fat of the peace offering. For I have reserved the breast of the special offering and the right thigh of the sacred offering for the priest. It is the permanent right of Aaron and his descendants to share in the peace offerings brought by the people of Israel. This is their rightful share. The special gifts presented to the Lord have been reserved for Aaron and his descendants from the time they were set apart to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded the Israelites to give these portions to the priest as their permanent share from generation to generation. These are the instructions for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, as well as the ordination offering and the peace offering. The Lord gave these instructions to Moses on Mount Sinai when he commanded the Israelites to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Leviticus 8 then the Lord said to Moses, Bring Aaron and his sons along with their sacred garments, the anointing oil, the bowl for the sin offering, the two rams, and the basket of bread made without yeast, and call the entire community of Israel together at the entrance of the tabernacle. So Moses followed the Lord's instructions, and the whole community assembled at the tabernacle entrance. Moses announced to them, This is what the Lord has commanded us to do. Then he presented Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. He put the official tunic on Aaron and tied the sash around his waist. He dressed him in the robe, placed the ephod on him, and attached the ephod securely with its decorative sash. Then Moses placed the chest piece on Aaron and put the Urim and the Thummim inside it. He placed the turban on Aaron's head and attached the gold medallion, the badge of holiness, to the front of the turban, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, making them holy. He sprinkled the oil on the altar seven times, anointing it and all its utensils, as well as the wash basin and its stand, making them holy. Then he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, anointing him and making him holy for his work. Next, Moses presented Aaron's sons. 
He clothed them in their tunics, tied their sashes around them, and put their special head coverings on them, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses presented the bull for the sin offering. Aaron and his son, sons laid their hands on the bull's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Moses took some of the blood, and with his finger he put it on the four horns of the altar to purify it. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Through this process he made the altar holy by purifying it. Then Moses took all the fat and the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat around them, and he burned it all on the altar. He took the rest of the bull, including its hide, meat, and dung, and burned it on a fire outside the camp, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses presented the ram for the burnt offering. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the ram's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Then Moses took the ram's blood and spattered it against all sides of the altar. Then he cut the ram into pieces, and he burned the head, some of its pieces, and the fat on the altar. After washing the internal organs and the legs with water, Moses burnt the entire ram on the altar as a burnt offering. It was a pleasant aroma, a special gift presented to the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses presented the other ram, which was the ram of ordination. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the ram's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Then Moses took some of its blood and applied it to the lobe of Aaron's right ear, the thumb on his right hand, and the big toe of his right foot. Next, Moses presented Aaron's sons and applied some of the blood to the lobes of their right ears, the thumbs of their right hands, and the big toes on their right feet. He then splattered the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar. Next, Moses took the fat, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the internal organs, the fat, the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat around them, along with the right thigh. On top of these, he placed a thin cake of bread made without yeast, a cake of bread mixed with olive oil, and a wafer spread with olive oil. All these were taken from the basket of bread made without yeast that was placed in the Lord's presence. He put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons, and he lifted these gifts as a special offering to the Lord. Moses then took all the offerings back from them and burned them on the altar on top of the burnt offering. This was the ordination offering. It was a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to the Lord. Then Moses took the breast and lifted it up as a special offering to the Lord. This was Moses' portion of the ram of ordination just as the Lord had commanded him. Next, Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood that was on the altar, and he sprinkled them on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. In this way, he made Aaron and his sons and their garments holy. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Boil the remaining meat of the offerings at the tabernacle entrance and eat it there, along with the bread that's in the basket of offerings for the ordination, just as I commanded when I said, Aaron and his sons will eat it. Any meat or bread that is left over must then be burned up. You must not leave the tabernacle entrance for seven days, for that is when the ordination ceremony will be completed. Everything we have done today was commanded by the Lord in order to purify you, making you right with Him. Now stay at the entrance of the tabernacle day and night for seven days and do everything the Lord requires. 
If you fail to do this, you will die, for this is what the Lord has commanded. So Aaron and his sons did everything the Lord had commanded through Moses. Leviticus 9 After the ordination ceremony on the eighth day, Moses called together Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both without defects, and present them to the Lord. Then tell the Israelites, Take a male goat for a sin offering and take a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without defects, for a burnt offering. Also take a bull and a ram for a peace offering, and flour moistened with olive oil for a grain offering. Present all these offerings to the Lord, because the Lord will appear to you today. So the people presented all these things at the entrance of the tabernacle, just as Moses had commanded. Then the whole community came forward and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering to purify yourself and the people. Then present the offerings of the people to purify them, making them right with the Lord, just as he has commanded. So Aaron went to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought him the blood, and he dipped his finger in it, and put it on the horns of the altar. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Then he burned on the altar the fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The meat and the hide, however, he burned outside the camp. Next, Aaron slaughtered the animal for the burnt offering. His sons brought him the blood, and he splattered it against all sides of the altar. Then they handed him each piece of the burnt offering, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. Then he washed the internal organs and the legs and burned them on the altar along with the rest of the burnt offering. Next, Aaron presented the offerings of the people. He slaughtered the people's goat and presented it as an offering for their sin, just as he had first done with the offering for his own sin. Then he presented the burnt offering and sacrificed it in the prescribed way. He also presented the grain offering, burning a handful of the flour mixture on the altar, in addition to the regular burnt offering for the morning. Then Aaron slaughtered the bull and the ram for the people's peace offering. His sons brought him the blood, and he splattered it against all sides of the altar. Then he took the fat of the bull and the ram, the fat of the broad tail, and from around the internal organs, along with the kidneys and the long lobes of the livers. He placed these fat portions on top of the breasts of the animals and burned them on the altar. Aaron then lifted up the breast and the right thigh as a special offering to the Lord, just as Moses had commanded. After that, Aaron raised his hands toward the people and blessed them. Then, after presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offering, he stepped down from the altar. Then Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle, and when they came back out, they blessed the people again, and the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. Fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. Leviticus 10 
Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. So the fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord meant when he said, I will display my holiness through those who come near me. I will display my glory before all the people. And Aaron was silent. Then Moses called for Mishael and Elzaphan, Aaron's cousins, the sons of Aaron's uncle, Aziel. He said to them, Come forward and carry away the bodies of your relatives from in front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. So they came forward and picked them up by their garments and carried them out of the camp, just as Moses had commanded. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Ethamar, Do not show grief by leaving your hair uncombed or by tearing your clothes. If you do, you will die, and the Lord's anger will strike the whole community of Israel. However, the rest of the Israelites, your relatives, may mourn because of the Lord's fiery destruction of Nadab and Abihu. But you must not leave the entrance of the tabernacle, or you will die, for you have been anointed with the Lord's anointing oil. So they did as Moses commanded. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your descendants must never drink wine or any other alcoholic drink before going into the tabernacle. If you do, you will die. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation. You must distinguish between what is sacred and what is common, between what is ceremonially unclean and what is clean. And you must teach the Israelites all the decrees that the Lord has given them through Moses. Then Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ethamar, Take what is left of the grain offering after a portion has been presented as a special gift to the Lord, and eat it beside the altar. Make sure it contains no yeast, for it is most holy. You must eat it in a sacred place, for it has been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the special gifts presented to the Lord. These are the commands I have been given. But the breast and thigh that were lifted up as a special offering may be eaten in any place that is ceremonially clean. These parts have been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the peace offerings presented by the people of Israel. You must lift up the thigh and breast as a special offering to the Lord, along with the fat of the special gifts. These parts will belong to you and your descendants as your permanent right, just as the Lord has commanded. Moses then asked them what had happened to the goat of the sin offering. When he discovered it had been burned up, he became very angry with Eleazar and Ethamar, Aaron's remaining sons. Why did you eat the sin offering in the sacred area? He demanded. It is a holy offering. The Lord has given it to you to remove the guilt of the community and to purify the people, making them right with the Lord. Since the animal's blood was not brought into the holy place, you should have eaten the meat in the sacred area as I ordered you. Then Aaron answered Moses, Today my sons presented both their offering and their burnt offering to the Lord, and yet this tragedy has happened to me. If I had eaten the people's sin offering on such a tragic day as this, would the Lord have been pleased? And when Moses heard this, he was satisfied. And there you have it for today's reading. Thank you all so much for fellowshipping with me. Um, as always, feel free to leave any prayer requests you have in the comments below so that myself, my prayer team, and anyone else who 
reads them can pray for you. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.